Hi, this is Kanu Babu. In this video, I am discussing about loops in C# .NET. Actually, loops is the co uh, common concept for any programming language. Whether you learn C language or C++ or Java or C# .NET or VB .NET, whatever it may be, the concept will never change from one language to another language. Only the syntax will change. We need to discuss about loop. Initially, what is a loop? So, loop is a mechanism which is used to execute some set of statements or some sequence of instructions repeatedly until a certain condition is reached. So, here loops are basically categorized into two types. One is range based loop, other one is condition based loop. So, for loop comes under range based loop, while loop and do while loop comes under condition based loop. So, whatever the problems we can develop with for loop, the same programs even you can develop with while loop as well as do while loop. But the main question here is when to use for loop and when to use while loop. So, when you know the range, go for for loop. If you don't know the range, go for while loop. For example, my requirement is write up to print a statement five times. So, here I know the range. Clearly, I need to rotate the loop for five times. So, go for for loop. Similarly, if I ask you to write a program uh, to find the even numbers between 1 to 10. So, here I have to, you know, I know the range. So, here I have to rotate the loop for 10 times because I have to check 10 numbers and in that 10 numbers I need to identify that which number is even number or odd number. Similarly, mostly when we try to get the data from database, is it clear? In database, we don't know how many records are available. But still, we need to fetch the data from the database. In that case, we don't know the range. So, it is better to go for while loop. Again, I am clearly mentioning whatever the programs you can develop with for loop, these all programs even we can develop with what? While loop also. In order to categorize in an easy manner, I categorize into two parts. One is range based loop, other one is condition based loop. So, every loop consists of three sections. One is initialization, other one is condition, another one is increment or decrement. So, here the syntax to declare the variable is data type variable name. And that the syntax to initialize the value for the variable is data type variable name is equals to value. For example, here you can say int i is equals to 10. So, what is the meaning of this statement here? So, every statement must end with semicolon. So, here int is a data type which will allocate 4 bytes of memory. And the name given for the memory is i. So, what is i? i is a variable. So, what is a variable? Variable is a Identifier. Variable is the name given for a particular memory location. The purpose of the variable is to identify a particular memory location. So, if you want to store the value in the memory or if you want to retrieve the value from the memory, we can uh, do with the help of what? Variable name. Right. So, here if you observe clearly, e single equal is called as assignment operator. We are assigning the value 10 in the memory whose name is what? I. I hope you understood. Now, what is a condition? A condition is generally used to compare two or more values or expressions. Condition will always return a boolean value, either true or false. For example, if I give 10 greater than equals to 3 plus 2. So, if the condition is true or false, true. Is it clear? So, there are different types of conditional operators are available, like less than, similarly greater than, similarly less than equal, greater than equal, double equal, not equal. So, here you must not confuse with single equal and double equal. So, what is the difference between single equal and double equal? Single equal is called as assignment operator and double equal is called as comparison operator. This assignment operator is used to assign the value for a particular variable and uh, comparison operator is used to compare two or more values or expressions. So, here if you observe, here I have written the statement int i is equal to 10. So, what is the meaning of this? We are assigning the value 10 in the memory whose name is i. Here, we are comparing the value 10 with what? 10. So, here the answer for this is true. 10 double equals to 10. The condition is what? True. Similarly, increment and decrement operator. Increment is used to increment the value. For example, here I declare one variable. Int i is equal to 10. If I write something like, I want to increment the i value by one time. So, you can use plus plus. You can write the same value as i is equals to i plus 1. In the same manner, here if you observe clearly, here i is what value. Right. So, here that is 10 plus 1 is 11. 
Now, if I want to increment the value by 5 times, so you can write like this, i is equal to i plus 5. I want to increment the value by 7 times, i is equal to i plus 7. So, we will decrement operator. Decrement operator is used to decrement the value, i minus minus. Or you can even write like i is equal to i minus 1. If you want to decrement the value by 5 times, you can write i is equal to i minus 5. And if you want to decrement the value by 9 times, here you can write i is equal to i minus 9. I hope you understood. So, here every loop consists of three, these three sections in common. Like uh, initialization, condition and increment or decrement. Now, the syntax to declare the for loop is, here you see, this is the syntax to declare what? For loop. For initialization, condition, increment or decrement statements. So, whatever the statements that you write within this flower basis is called as block. So, when to declare a block? If you want to print more than one statement, you have to declare the block. If you want to print only one statement, no need of block. So, how the for loop will execute? Step number one is initialization. Step number two is condition. Step number three is statements. Step number four is increment or decrement. Step number five is condition. So, initialization only one time. Step number six is statements. So, it will execute like this. This is initialization and this is condition and here uh, this is uh, statements and here you can find increment or decrement. So, step number one is initialization. Next condition. Next statements. Next increment or decrement. Next again it will check the condition. See the arrows positions. First one is initialization. Next condition. If the condition is true, it will execute what? Statements. And then it will increment or decrement. Next again check the condition. If the condition is true, execute the statements. And this, this is called as loop. This loop will rotate until the condition will become what? False. I hope you understood. So, here you see I mentioned the steps. Step number one is initialization and then it will check the condition. If the condition is true, then it will execute the statements. Increment or decrement. Again, it will check the condition. If the condition is true, it will execute the statements. Again, increment or decrement. If the condition is false, it will exit. It will terminate the for loop. So, actually, whenever we are writing any logical programs, we will face uh, the major problem. The major problem here is, we will mix the loop along with what? Logic. We will mix the loop along with logic. So, what I am trying to tell here is, uh, confidently we must know how to write what? Loop. Then we have to think about what? Logic. For example, I want to write a program to print welcome to world of dot net. So, you can uh, write in this manner, console dot write line of welcome to world of dot net. If it is C language, you will write printf. If it is C++, C out. If it is Java, system dot out dot println. I want to print welcome to world of dot net for how many times? Five times. Now, I have to write the same statement for how many times? Five times. So, instead of writing the same code repeatedly again and again, you keep this code inside where? Loop. So, now you must know how to write the loop. We already know the syntax to declare what? For loop. For, for initialization, condition, increment or decrement. So, as I told that we are dividing the loop and logic. So, actually how many times I want to rotate the loop? Five times. It may be starting from what? 0 to 4 means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Five times I am rotating the loop. 1 to 5, 5 times I am rotating the loop. 11 to 15, 101 to 105, 1001 to 1005. So, here for int i is equal to what? 0 i less than equals to what? 4. Because I want to rotate the loop how many times? 5 times. Here the number is incrementing or decrementing? Incrementing means initially 5 is 0. Means I am rotating the loop for first time. If i is 1, I am rotating the loop for second time. If i is 2, I am rotating the loop for third time to print welcome to world of dot net. If i is 3, I am rotating the loop for uh, fourth time. If i is 4, I am rotating the loop for fifth time. 
and the same for loop here i can write in another manner also something like this for int i is equals to 1 i less than equals to what 5 i plus plus now also embedded in the loop how many times 5 times or else i can declare for int i is equals to 1001 i hope you understood and i less than equals to 1005 now also embedded in the loop how many times 5 times only so it doesn't matter that uh, uh, I must be always 0 or I must be always 1. It may be any number. But you must know that uh, confidently we need to write the loop. I hope you understood. So now here I want to print uh, welcome to world of dot net for 5 times. So initial how it is working. Initial. So here step 1 is initialization. So initially I will declare one variable here i. Is it clear? So int i is equal to 0 means here I declare the variable i and initial i is what? 0. Now step number 1 is initialization. Step number 2 is condition. Here 0 less than equals to 4. Condition is what? True. If the condition is true, it will enter into the for and it will print the statement. Welcome to world of dot net for first time. Now next increment or decrement? Increment. Increment the i value by how many times? One time. So now i is how much? 1. Increment means i is equal to i plus 1. Now again check the condition. Here what is the condition? 1 less than equals to 4. Condition is what? True. If the condition is true, it will print welcome to world of dot net for second time. Similarly increment. Now i is how much? 2. Is it clear? It means the third time we are rotating the loop. So 2 less than equals to 4. Condition is true. So print world of dot net for third time. Now I use how much? 3. It means that uh, fourth time we are rotating the loop to print welcome to world of dot net. So here 3 less than equals to uh, 4. Condition is what? True. Now I use how much? 4. Increment the I value. 4. Now 4 less than equals to 4. Condition is what? True. It means that fifth time we are rotating the loop to print welcome to world of dot net. Is it clear? And uh, now increment, i is how much? 5. i is 5. Now here, 5 less than equals to what? 4. Condition is what? False come out of the for loop. I hope you understood. So if I ask you to rotate the for loop for 10 times, you can write in this manner. For int i is equals to 1, means first time I am rotating the loop. Next increment, i is equals to 2, 3, up to 10 times. The same for loop you can write in this manner. For int i is equals to 0, i less than equals to 9. So now also I am rotating the loop how many times? 10 times. Or for int i is equals to 11, i less than equals to 20. Now also I am rotating the loop 10 times. For int i is equals to 1001, i less than equals to 1010. Now also I am rotating the loop for 10 times. It doesn't matter that uh, i must be always 1 or i must be always 0. Okay, the starting number may be anything. It means that I am rotating the loop for how many times? 10 times. I hope you understood. In the next video, we will discuss some examples with what? Loops. For more videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as to my Facebook group. Thank you. Have a nice day.